I'm a lover of both films and music and last week I was watching a film that had some excellent music in it so I thought I'd have a look through my films and pick 10 that I thought were worth talking about. I'm not talking about films that are concerts or films like Hard Day's Night which was a Beatles vehicle and I'm not talking about original scores either but films that just had great music by lots of artists in them. Of the 10 films I'm going to be talking about, two are classic films that I personally have never enjoyed. However, the soundtrack albums that accompanied them were superb. I'll talk more about those later. When we've got to the end, if you think there are films that I should have in my collection, because A, they're good, and B, the music in it is great, then feel free to comment down below and let me know so that I can get around to seeing them. And at the end, there's a bonus film that will be well worth waiting for as well. So without further ado, let's start my countdown. At number 10, it's Coast to Coast. It's a film from 1987 starring Lenny Henry and John Shay about two guys who have a love for 60s R&B and join together to run a 60s disco. They're not the most successful and they get involved in some dodgy dealing that sees them travelling from Liverpool down to the Essex coast in order to get some easy money. It's got a magnificent soundtrack comprising of classic early Motown and it's a joy to hear those songs. I remember seeing it when it came out and recorded it onto VHS tape. And then at some stage later, I transferred it to DVD. I don't think it's ever been put out on DVD. It's a comedy, but it's not the strongest. And without the music, it wouldn't be as good as it is. I don't think it's ever likely to be released on DVD either, but I see it's on YouTube if you fancy having a look at it. At number nine, from 1977, Saturday Night Fever. It's a film that was definitely a game changer and kickstarted disco in the UK from the underground to the mainstream. But I have to say, I have never liked the film. I don't like the relationships in it, and what's more, I don't like the people much either. It's gritty, it's dark, and apart from the music, there is nothing I like about the film. I've got it on DVD, and every now and again I go back to it to see if I'm going to like it more than the last time I've watched it. But you know what? I never have. The dance scenes are the only part of the film that I like. But the music, whoa. At number eight, American Graffiti from 1973. This is the other film that I don't like. Again, I've watched it four or five times, but I've never enjoyed it, which is the opposite of the soundtrack album, which I had as a kid and I still love. I'm not sure what it is about the film that I don't like, but it seems as though I'm one of the few that don't seem to like it. The story set over one night in 1962 after a high school graduation and it basically comprises of people cruising up and down the strip one last time before pursuing their next steps in the world. Almost everyone I've ever talked to about this film generally love it. For me, it's only the music that makes it worth watching. At number seven, Chef. Made in 2014, it's a film about a chef who hates the restrictions of his job in a restaurant, who gets pushed to the point where he quits, and he ends up with a food truck thanks to his ex-wife's help. It's a story about him building a relationship with his young son whilst bringing his food truck from Miami back across the country. Ably helped by his best friend and his son's prowess on social media, they have a successful trip making some good money along the way. It's an uplifting film and it has an excellent soundtrack, which features some great Cuban Latin music with a splash of salsa, a bit of Al Green and even some reggae. At number six, that will be the day from 1973. Now I remember seeing this when it came out and thinking it was a right miserable film. But for some reason, I liked it. Perhaps it was because it had Ringo Starr, Billy Fury and Keith Moon in it, as well as David Essex. It's a film about Jim McLean, abandoned by his father at an early age. And although he's quite intelligent, he's a bit like his father. 
and he doesn't take his school exams, leaves home and basically drifts from job to job. It tracks his life through those jobs and by the end he thinks he might like to try his luck in a band. The film ends leaving you feeling like the whole story hasn't been told and it hasn't. There's a follow-up film called Stardust that continues the story. Although the film is a bit dark, it's a film crammed with excellent music from the classic days of rock and roll. When the film came out, it was accompanied by a double album of hits and songs from the film, which I bought at the time and I still have. At number five, Good Morning Vietnam from 1987. It's a comedy with a bit of a heart. Set during the Vietnam War, Robin Williams plays DJ Adrian Cronauer, who was, in actual fact, a real-life DJ who was in Vietnam at the time. His job is to bring some humour to an otherwise stressful, tense and dangerous time for the armed forces. Now, the forces themselves love him, but the management of the station don't, especially as he treats them all with contempt. He's only really interested in having a good time when he's off air and looking to school with the local girls. However, he gradually starts to see what's going on and he gets more and more engrossed in what's happening all around him. But not being allowed to talk about it on the air really gets to him. In the film, Robin Williams is backed by an excellent cast and although it's funny, I've got to admit I was left with a lump in my throat at the end of the film. It is a great film with some fantastic music throughout it. And as you can imagine, being in the mid 60s, it's a fine soundtrack. At number four, The Boat That Rocked from 2009. In America, this film was called Pirate Radio. Now, I love this film, even though there are so many things in it that just jump out and annoy me. It's set on a pirate radio station in 1967 and the cast is just superb. The first time I saw it in the pictures though, I moaned about the fact that the songs that were being played, what you were hearing was on the wrong label, what I saw on the decks. And in the racks, I saw record sleeves that weren't there in 1967 because they weren't designed until the 1970s. You see, to someone as nerdy as me, that is really annoying. Debs tells me to take my pink fluffy anorak off when I start to moan about all the things that are wrong about the film. And yet, I absolutely love it. The characters are all different. Each is played so really well. And it's just really funny. Not for one minute do I think that the real pirate radio stations were anything like that in real life. But this depiction is joyous to watch. And one bit of trivia for you about this film, much of it was filmed at sea, but could be seen from the seafront at Weymouth, where I lived at the time. As for the music, it is spot on. They've got the music just right, and I really love that too. At number three, Dirty Dancing, another 1987 great film. It's based in 1963, and Baby and her family are off to the Catskills for their summer holiday. Her parents have plans for her future. But while they're there, Baby becomes infatuated by a dance instructor, Johnny, and the story takes a turn from there. She becomes involved in the lives of the staff at the resort and ends up partnering Johnny in dance routines after his normal dance partner has to have an abortion. Baby's father, a doctor, saves the girl's life and learns about Baby's involvement with the staff. It's most likely that you know the outcome to the film, so I don't need to tell you really, do I? But as you can expect, all turns out well and all right in the end. One thing's for sure, the music is cracking. And I can remember buying the two soundtrack albums as soon as they came out. I just love the film. At number two, 1978's FM. Now I love this film, especially as I've done a bit of radio along the way. It's about a successful adult oriented rock station that is the best in its area and because of that the company that own it want them to start playing regular commercials and sends one of its crack salesmen to the station to get the deals up and running. Station manager Jeff Dugan rebels and quits and the station DJs all go on strike. Outside the station crowds gather and it gets all out of control. 
Now the owner of the company is informed about the situation and flies in to sort it all out. At the end of the day, all ends up well for the station and the manager and the staff win the day. The story itself is a bit weak around the edges, but the same can't be said for the soundtrack. With music from the likes of Steely Dan, the Doobie Brothers, the Eagles, Linda Ronstadt and many more, the soundtrack is well worth watching the film for. And so we come to my favourite of the bunch. And it's the only soundtrack in my top 10 that features the stars of the film. It's Grease from 1978. It's one of my top three films of all time. I just love the joy in the film. As opposed to American Graffiti, this is a much more humorous depiction of the high school kids, even if all of them were headed towards 30 in real life. You know the story. Boy meets girl, spends the summer with her and they fall in love. She's new in the town and she joins Rydell High School where she tells the Pink Ladies gang about the boy she met in the summer. It turns out that the boy is Danny Zuko, who at school isn't the same Danny as she'd met on the beach. The film is cheesy, it's corny, and I love it. I saw it for the first time when it came out and I was with about 40 of my friends when we went to the pictures to see it. And I can remember afterwards, we were all outside a pub singing the songs. And the memory of that night has always made that film a bit special for me. You probably know all the hits from the film, but my favorite song was the one sung by Stockard Channing, who played Rizzo. I'm sure there are a lot of people who thought that this film was overrated, but it wasn't for me. It's a film that doesn't take itself seriously. It has a lot of fun and expects the person watching it to have a bit of fun as well. I've watched it so many times and I still think it's a classic. Now, as I said at the beginning, if there are other films with fantastic soundtracks that you think I should know about, then please comment below and let me know. And before I go, there's one more film I'd like to mention that could have easily been in this top 10. And that's the 1991 film, The Commitments. It's the story of the rise and fall of a Dublin band called The Commitments. It's funny, occasionally it's a bit dramatic, and well worth watching, if only to hear Andrew Strong singing Otis Redding's Try a Little Tenderness. It's a really watchable little film that's got some great humour and also for the classic R&B music that they sing throughout it. It's a film I've watched over and over through the years. And that's it for this video. If you're checking out the channel for the first time and you've got to this stage of it, well done. Don't feel though that you've got to subscribe. Check out a few more videos before you make a decision. After all, you may realize that I'm not your cup of tea. So to help you on your way, click up there and I'll tell you about all the DVDs I bought in March. I'll see you next time.